Ladies, trust me, I know just how confusing the competitive landscape can be at a bodybuilding show. There are so many categories. How do you know where you belong? Today, I'm gonna break down all of them, explain a little history, and hopefully guide you towards the best fit. Let's hit it. As a full-time contest prep coach, there are many questions I get asked on an infinite loop multiple times every week from aspiring female competitors and would-be clients. Do you think I can be competitive? What is peak week like? Should I take creatine? And the big one, what category should I compete in? This last one in particular is frankly a good question because there are so many options and the lines have really been blurred between many of them for where a lot of women, there are several potentially valid answers. So let's dive in and take a look at all of the options and we're gonna do this in more or less ascending order of muscularity and leanness. At some point, you may notice a bit of a dividing line where the categories beyond that point are a bit too extreme for you and so you've officially narrowed it down to anything south of that line. Keep in mind the visual example that I'm gonna show you here are of the IFBB Olympia winners from last year. So very literally, these are the women considered to be at the peak of the mountain in the world. It does not mean that you have to look like this to be competitive, especially in your first show. This is just what we can safely consider as the standard that someone in that category might want to aim for. Let's get started, but first up, just a little bit of a history here. I don't have time for a history lesson. Bodybuilding was really a men's only club until the 1960s outside of some beauty pageant exhibitions that were really just a sideshow at men's bodybuilding competitions. Back then, bodybuilding was the only category for women as it was for men. Of course, it looked quite a bit different than it does today. Fitness was introduced next in 1985 and the Fitness America pageant began in 1989. It's now owned by MuscleMania and operates under the Fitness Universe brand. Figure started up in 2001. Remember the one piece swimsuit round? If you see current competitors with old pics rocking the one piece, you know that they've been around a while. Bikini was introduced as a category only in 2010. If you're fairly new to bodybuilding, it's kind of funny to think of that category as being less than 15 years old. Women's physique came about in 2013. The stupidly named wellness category started up in 2021 on the heels of a popular aesthetic trend favoring a dominant lower body that started in South America. So now you might be asking, why do all these categories exist? There can't be that much difference between them, right? What? What, what are we doing? And you're correct. The reason ostensibly is money. More categories mean more money for promoters in terms of opening up the sport to new competitors and also picking up more money in crossover fees where someone would enter multiple categories in the same show. In reality though, the sport is really kind of starting to cannibalize itself. Last year, the Arnold Classic didn't even offer figure, women's physique, or bodybuilding as categories because the brains in charge ran the math incorrectly, I might argue, that they'd spend more in prize money than those athletes would bring into the show in terms of audience. The lines between categories are becoming diluted enough now that it's hard to make the case that all of them are really necessary. That being said, let's break down the specifics and the requirements of each category, starting with bikini. The bikini category has the lowest barrier of entries of all categories in a bodybuilding show. It's not an attack, it's just a fact. Um, you don't need as much muscle and you don't need to be insanely lean to be successful in bikini. You can't be out of shape, but being freaky isn't necessarily an asset in this category. The judges here are really looking for shape, flow, roundness, the right, amount of conditioning, which can be a very mysterious target that you can spend your entire career chasing based on shifting standards coming from the judges on a given day, and the right amount of size. Some with more developed legs and glutes, but not too crazy. Look at wellness in a few minutes, then come back here and compare. Bikini competitors are on stage in heels, typically four to five inches, and the overall presentation is one that is kind of off-putting to some aspiring competitors, being deemed too flirty or something along those lines. Um, with that presentation, you can't fake it. You've gotta be able to feel it and sell it convincingly or the judges are gonna see right through it. This is usually also the most stacked category for women at shows, again, due to the lower barrier of entry. And a lot of competitors will start here and if it's not ultimately where they'll want to land, they'll eventually move up to wellness or figure. Competitors who are most successful in bikini typically just have a small or more slight frame. This is genetic and it's something that you can't control. So it's worth keeping in mind if you have wide clavicles or just a more substantial bone structure or just less of a dramatic waist, no matter how much you lean out. Categories in bikini are divided based 
only on height. Next up, we have figure. We'll come back to fitness momentarily for reasons that will make more sense in a moment. Next up from bikini, we step things up both in terms of muscularity and leanness with a big shift in presentation as well as we move to figure. There are stated guidelines for the figure category that often get overlooked in judging at local shows until things get a little too extreme. Simply because at most shows, there aren't going to be a ton of figure competitors. At local shows, it's not common to be too big or too lean, just because most competitors will be lacking in size as well as conditioning, so bigger and leaner will usually win out to some degree. Now, at the national level and above, the written standards are easier to enforce because most competitors are showing up in shape with a competitive level of size on their frame. But if you're pushing boundaries at a local show, it wouldn't be uncommon to get feedback from the judges along the lines of, hey, you should cons consider women's physique while still possibly winning. On stage, we're still in those four to five inch heels, but the presentation here is quite a bit different from bikini, a bit more formal and standardized, utilizing quarter turns and off angle poses to accentuate certain lines and shapes. The overall stated goal is total body symmetry. But in reality, if you come to the stage with giant delts, huge sweeping quads, and a tiny waist, that's what the judges want to see. Again, you can overdo it, but at lower levels, a more extreme look is typically going to be embraced and rewarded by the judges. And figure once again, classes are determined by height only. Now, let's take a quick lateral step over to fitness. In fitness, you could be mistaken for thinking this is just figure with a different name. Aesthetically, in terms of overall muscular development and conditioning that are rewarded, it's splitting hairs to really identify much of a difference. It's incredibly common for a competitor in fitness to cross over into figure simply because shows usually have zero to one fitness competitor. And if someone in fitness actually wants to compete against someone at a level below nationals, they'll likely need to do so in figure. At the national level in the NPC, crossovers from fitness are not allowed. So what's the difference? Well, fitness also requires a gymnastics routine to be performed, which is a huge barrier of entry for most women. There are four mandatory moves, moves in this routine that must be a part of it, a push-up, high kick, straddle hold, and side split. And the duration of that routine can be up to two minutes in length. The routine consists of two thirds of your total score. So just hitting the minimum requirements ain't gonna cut it when you're at the national or pro level. Posing in the comparison round consists of figure style quarter turns and heels, but the routine is typically going to be performed in athletic shoes appropriate for gymnastics work. This routine is always highly choreographed and often follows a theme that the competitor's costume is aligned with as well. Pro fitness competitors and those vying for pro cards are typically seasoned high-level gymnasts with an extensive background starting from a young age. If that isn't you, just skip this one. But don't skip this. If you are looking for guidance to get up to the stage yourself and wondering exactly how can you make this work, you likely have a billion questions. I have a question. You probably need a coach. And hey, guess what? That's what I do. I'm on YouTube for fun, but I make my living as a full-time contest prep coach. So if you're interested in learning more about what it's like working with me as a coach, hit the link in the description to read more on my website and you'll see what it's all about. Okay, next up we have wellness, which as of 2024 is the newest category, but that can change any day now, realistically. The general aesthetic target for wellness is most similar to bikini, but with a way more developed lower body all around to the point of it completely overpowering the upper body. I always thought bodybuilding was about symmetry, but clearly what it's really always been about at the highest level is being freaky. And wellness embraces that mindset with a more is better approach to glute and leg development specifically. As of 2024, judges have really kind of failed to draw much of a boundary here as to where this category needs to sit with extreme levels of development approaching and surpassing that of women's physique still being rewarded so long as the upper body isn't similarly developed to match, you know, symmetry. The stated rules are that wellness should be less conditioned or not as lean as most other categories, but generally speaking, the women who do best in wellness are pretty damn shredded. Um, this may, again, turn out to be something that finds a bit more balance over time. Remember that as of recording this video today, this category is only three years old, if you can believe that. On stage, once again, we're in heels. Um, posing consists of a side-facing front pose and a back pose with some fairly convoluted transitional vocabulary between those shots. Classes are, again, determined by height only. Onward and upward we go to Women's Physique, or WPD for Women's Physique Division. What we get here is a pretty significant uptick overall in the level of development and conditioning that get rewarded on stage. For the most part, as big as you can get and as lean as you can get will win out. The judges are looking for symmetry here with no body parts being heavily favored as in wellness. It's more about 
how much muscle can your frame hold without losing its flow? There's a high crossover potential here between WPD and women's bodybuilding. Though it's not a clearly defined line, there's a bit of a gut check that you can perform with a seasoned eye and someone is just going to look more like a women's physique competitor or more like a bodybuilder. It's not about raw mass always, but how a competitor's shape and structure holds that mass. It's very common to hear stories about women who after a chat with their coach, they decided to switch categories. Often it works well and often it doesn't. Sometimes you just don't know until you try. The stage presentation here finally loses the heels as everything is performed barefoot on stage. Posing consists of standard quarter turns and five mandatory poses as well. Front and back double bicep, side chest and tricep, and abdominals and thigh. Women's physique competitors will also perform a routine of their own design set to music of their choosing, typically for one minute at most shows. This is a free form routine and at NPC shows it is not judged as it's performed at finals and the judging is all decided in the morning or earlier component of the show. Classes here are once again height based only. So that leaves women's bodybuilding as the remaining category. This is basically just if you're too big and too lean for everything else, this is where you belong. This is where extremes are embraced without much reservation, though there has been pushback on this in past years where judges have made attempts to downsize the category by punishing those deemed to be too big, and the category went away entirely for a couple years before being brought back in the early 2020s. It's had a very rocky history from being the only opportunity for women to compete in the sport early on to being the first one omitted from shows today when budgets are tight. There have been tons of articles and videos made about drug abuse in this category, and I won't rehash all of that here other than to say the category of women's bodybuilding certainly has played a significant role in its own marginalization. Excess drug use leading to highly virilized or masculine looking competitors has made it an easy target for promoters who are looking to make money from the sport and increase the overall appeal of competing. Having even a few women who look and sound too masculine for the general population makes them and the sport as a whole an easy target for the general public to point fingers at and ridicule. Fair or unfair, that's the reality. The trick is balancing a mind-blowing physique with facial features that still pass as feminine. Most uninitiated viewers won't tell the difference, and unfortunately, they tend to have some of the loudest voices. In terms of stage presentation, we're again barefoot, hitting quarter turn poses and eight additional mandatory poses. Like women's physique, bodybuilders also perform an individual routine choreographed and set to music of their choosing as part of an unscored finals routine. Team. This category is the only one for women that is divided into weight classes as opposed to height. The categories are lightweight, middleweight, light heavyweight, and heavyweight. And there you have it. Those are the six, yes, count them, six categories for women. Hopefully this clears the air a bit and provides some answers. And unfortunately, some of those answers are just that there isn't a lot of space between some of these categories. And we have to assume that's by design. Figuring out where you belong in the big picture can be tough. So don't forget to hit the link in the description to read about my coaching program. You can contact me directly from there for more information. As always, be kind, be disciplined, and work hard.